All right, so let's get into Notepad, and um, we're we're gonna make a we're gonna start with a brand new topic. We created a mobile-friendly project from scratch with our own bare hands. We wrote a lot of CSS to create a mobile-friendly project. Now I'm gonna introduce what is known as a framework a framework for us to be able to create a mobile project faster. What we created last time is a template. The file, the HTML and the CSS from project 2 can be used as a template to create new projects from it. A framework is like a template in that it has but that it has more features. We're going to use a, a framework called jQuery Mobile. This is a way of writing code to create mobile projects a lot faster. We won't have to manually write 300 lines of CSS. We need to write a lot less HTML and CSS to accomplish what we want to do. That's what a framework often lets you do. There's a set of like shortcuts that we can use to create a project quickly jQuery Mobile is one framework. Ionic is another. Onsen. There's lots of frameworks that will help you accomplish tasks quickly. So what we'll do first is start with our doc type. I haven't created a folder for this, which we should, and I haven't saved this yet. But we can do this both at once, right here. Just type your doc type first and then file save as. And on your flash drive or desktop or whatever, you can create a folder. And we'll call this uh, JQM, jQuery Mobile uh, 2017, 07, 17, 717. Well, look at that, it's 7, 17, 17. We'll save this as index.html. So index.html into some project folder, save it somewhere. We've got doc type. We'll need the usual here, HTML head, body, meta tag, title, title will do jqm, jQuery mobile, and then body h1. So we'll start off with these 10 lines of code to jQuery Mobile. Okay, so this is a basic 10-line HTML project. Let's uh, back. Uh, let's go into the body and let's back up for a moment before H1. And we'll add a new tag: section. We'll wrap section around 
your H1. So section. Section is an HTML5 tag. And the way we're going to use this is to create, in this case, we're going to use sections to create different screens in our project. We use section in the Marvel blog as there's a section for the left column, for the right column. But via jQuery Mobile, we will see that section can be a whole screen full. So for project two, you created index.html, about.html, contact.html. Via jQuery Mobile, we can use section to create a home section, an about section, a contact section, completely separate screens, all in one file. So use sections. Create screens of content. Can we create CSI as well? What's that? CSI as well. Um, that I can't quite answer that just yet because you'll see that it'll make sense what we're about to do in a moment with uh, jQuery Mobile. So sections, section tag, we will use the section tag to create different screens with jQuery Mobile. Let's create another section. Let's say H1, page 2. Oops, H1. So throughout the whole class so far, we've used H1 once in the project. We can use H2 multiple times, H3, etc. Look at this. I did use H1 multiple times. We can actually use H1 multiple times per document, but when they're separated by sections, it's OK that we use H1 again here. That might be a good note. OK to, to reuse H1. If in a section. Otherwise, we shouldn't. If uh, the way we've done it before for project one and two, it was one document with no special separation, so we only could uh, sh we, we we should only use H one once. But when we have separate sections in the way that we're about to learn here, we can have separate H ones. Now, if you save this and run it. Go ahead and save and run it. You'll be very disappointed because it doesn't look like actual separate sections. So Chrome or Firefox doesn't matter. I'm going with Firefox at the moment. Uh, there's a page one, sort of a section one of intro, and then there's a page two, which here it is separated by sections, but not visually. Section doesn't have built in the capability to separate screens. <clears throat> it's up to us via CSS or other means to actually separate it. With, with what we're about to write in a moment, we will then have, when we set this up properly, we will have a screen full which will only be inside of this section. And then let's say we click a button and then we go to section two, page two. There will be separations that each one of these sections will be a complete screen. And that will be through jQuery Mobile. We need to add four lines of code, which will set up our, our framework. A framework, like I said, it's basically shortcuts. 
So we've got the jQuery mobile framework, which will let us create different sections and other really cool things like animation, quickly create icons. jQuery mobile is a framework for us to create mobile projects quickly using jQuery. And we'll talk about jQuery a little later also. So the lines of code that we need, we've got meta tag, we've got title. Before title, let's add another meta tag. Let's add that mobile-friendly viewport. Remember that? We'll still use that. It's got meta name equals something and, val and, and content equals something. We did this in the Marvel blog project 2 to make the project mobile-friendly, so we need this one again. It was meta name equals viewport. And then the content was this thing here about the initial scale and all of that. Uh, so initial scale equals 1, user dash scalable equals no, and width was device width. So we've seen that one before. That's uh, what we needed for the for the mobile friendly starting point. Oops, make sure you spell that right. With next is coming a line uh, that is going to be really long, but once you type it right. It's very powerful. Link. Uh, we've seen link to connect to a style sheet. Link rel style sheet. And then href something. So we've seen this line before. We're going to connect to a style sheet. jQuery mobile is a collection of three files one style sheet file and two JavaScript files. So if we connect, if we use these three files, we unlock the features of jQuery mobile, which one of the features is separating sections from each other. We can either download the files and include them in our project folder or connect to them on the internet. For the moment, we'll connect to them on the internet, so it will be this long address, http colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com slash mobile slash one dot four dot five slash jQuery dot mobile dash one dot four dot five dot min Dot CSS. Ultimately, we connect to a CSS file. Ultimately, this is a CSS file in the folder 1.4.5, in the folder mobile, on the server jQuery.com. So we're using the web browser to connect to the jQuery server, into the mobile folder, into this version of jQuery mobile to that file. Now you don't see this too often, unless you're a web designer, dot something, dot something. You, you see dot CSS, or dot JPEG, or dot JS, but um, for web developers, we often then see this, dot min, dot CSS. This is minified, or minimized. It's compressed that file has been compressed so that it's more efficient, it downloads faster, so we can use it. So check your, check your spelling here. This is going to activate the CSS shortcuts for jQuery mobile. 
We can write a note right above it to say connect to the CSS file on the jQuery server. We could go to that website and download the file and put it into our folder and then the path would be a lot shorter. For the moment, uh, we'll connect to the online version, that's okay. What comes next is we're going to write the uh, other two files that we need. I said we needed to connect to a CSS file and two JavaScript files. Now, the little that we worked on JavaScript, you, you might recall we wrote our JavaScript at the end of our document before the end of body. So that's what we're going to write the connections to the JavaScript files. So go down to before where body ends, minus line 19, and then we're going to write script opening and closing tags. Script has a pair. Uh, we use this pair of tags similarly to here, where we're then going to connect to an online file. The syntax about how this works is very specific. Opening and closing tags, and then we need an attribute in the first tag of source. work if you put it between the script tags and it will not work if you put it as an attribute of the closing tag source is an attribute of the opening tag and we're going to have something similar HTTP colon slash slash code dot jQuery dot com but this time a little easier, slash jQuery dash two dot two dot four dot min dot js. Make sure that's js JavaScript. So we're connecting to this JavaScript file that has been minified, that has been compressed. It's on the jQuery server. One more script. In this case, we can do a little bit of uh, copy and paste. I'm going to copy the, the top line up here, except for the CSS. I'm not connecting to a CSS file. I need to connect to a file that looks almost exactly the same, but it's .min.js. So you can copy if you wrote it properly, your path from the CSS file into the source of your script, but .js. It's connecting to the jQuery server, to the mobile folder, the 145 folder, the jQuery mobile, 145min.js. If you take a quick look at it in the web browser, we're almost there. It looks the same. Actually, it doesn't. Here's the version before jQuery Mobile. Here's the version after jQuery Mobile. The font is different, and the background color. It was white here, and it's gray. Maybe you can barely see it, but it is a gray. So. We're not quite there yet, but you should see something like this. The font should have changed. It went from like a Times New Roman to like an Arial. The text moved all the way to the left, and the background color changed to a very, very light gray. If it doesn't look like that, let's pause here because the rest will not work. This is one way to make sure it's working so far. If you need some help, let me know. It did it not look like that for you. And it's a really long lines of code, but there's the there's that. Yep.
we can set some uh, notes at the bottom. Connect to. To JavaScript libraries. Files. On the jQuery server. At the top, we connected to a CSS file, and here we connected to two jQuery files, and they should be typed in this order. We connected to like the parent jQuery framework, and then a child one of jQuery mobile. We have other ones as well, jQuery UI, to help us create different user interface elements. But jQuery is a super popular way to write JavaScript. Its motto is uh, write less, do more. So in traditional JavaScript, let's say you have to write a command that is 20 characters long. If you're using jQuery, that command might be seven characters long. You write less JavaScript code to accomplish more if you're connected to the JavaScript library, the jQuery JavaScript library. Now that we're connecting to the jQuery mobile library, which needs first jQuery, now we're able, we're going to be able to separate these sections into different screens and do many more new things. So the final piece of the puzzle is we need to use the the right code that um, basically upgrades our HTML. into something modern for mobile. Let's back up to line 11 where we've got our first section. We'll add an attribute. So inside of the section tag, attribute data dash role page. And then for your second section, data dash role equals page. Now save it and run it. Now if you save and run that, you should see the separation of screens. should only see the stuff of the first section. The second section still exists, it's just that I can't see it. And what happened is a bunch of stuff behind the scenes that we don't really need to know how it works, we just need to know how to use it. So whenever we want to create a screen full of content, we create a section and we give it a data role attribute of page. We have a brand new screen. Here's our first screen. Well, I want to go from the first section to the second section. I want to click a button to go from the first section to the second section. In order for that to work, we need to give each of these sections a unique identifier. What do you think that means? An ID. So my first section, ID equals home. Now let's do it this way to be obvious for the moment. Page one. And then we need an ID for the second section, page two. That is a unique identifier. This section, it may have one line, it may have a hundred lines of content. This section may have one line or a thousand lines of content. They're separated because they've got data roles of page, and they've got unique IDs. So now they can be identified by a code. So we go from one to another. And it's simple links. Let's back up to our first section. We'll say go to page two. And we're going to create a link that goes from page one to page two. What's the tag to make links? 
a tag. So this is going to be a, 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 a hyperlink at the link. So we click on this and it takes us to page two. We need an href. This will look familiar. href equals pound page two. Why does that look familiar? Remember when we created those nav bars at the top of your resume, if you wanted to jump from the top down to your education. You had a nav bar, you clicked on the education link, and it jumped you down to your education section. And that was set up the same way. We had, I think we did sections, and then we had IDs, and then at the top nav bar, it had the education link, href pound education. ID equals education, and it will jump us down. So it has the same concept that you can jump to sections, but now these sections are screenfuls of content. If you save it and run it, intro to, to jQuery Mobile, I click on the go to page two. page 2. I see now only the content of page 2. From one section to another section. Make sure you've got the pound sign right there. Right, so um, if you back up to uh, line uh, 15, you can make a note here, uh, create a hyperlink from this section to another. That's what that did. Uh, normally, that would open a different file. We're in the same file. We can get to it via the ID. Well, via jQuery Mobile, we can uh, create a button. If we add another attribute to the A tag, data role equals button. There's a button with a rollover. So instead of us writing a bunch of CSS, look at what happened. Edge, roundness, drop shadow, rollover, all of that built into data roll button. And that works because somewhere inside of the jQuery CSS file and the JavaScript file, there's a definition that says whenever you use data roll button on an A tag, convert it to that. And that's the whole point of jQuery Mobile and many of these frameworks. If you know <coughs> how it works, that is how to use it, you can accomplish a lot. And I've got a button. If I click on that, it goes to page two.
what we can also do is data role equals button we can attach animation data dash transition technically it already has a transition it already has an animation it's very subtle but it's an animation of fade do you notice that it actually fades from one screen to the other so there's an animation called fade, which we already it already has it built in, so never mind that one. We have another one called flip. To create an animation ourselves in CSS is hard. But with jQuery Mobile, we just say data transition, flip. And it has the built-in flip animation, and we flip between the screens. Let's give that one a try. Click that. The screen looks like it's flipping. We have slide. Slide animation. You go from one screen to another with a little slide motion. I think there's about six built in ones, and you can make your own. It's complicated. There's about six of them. We, we will look up how many there are a little bit later, but that's two for the moment that we can that we can use. Well, three. There's the built-in fade. There's flip, and there's slide. Here's one more thing. Data dash icon. We can attach an icon to this button. There's 50 built-in icons into jQuery mobile for some very common tasks for example home this creates an icon of a little house like a home button and there's user this is an icon of a person so again there's like 50 of them we can go look them all up at the official website a little later but uh, these are some uh, icons we've got we've got arrows um, I think it's arrow u arrow dash u for up Somewhere in the hundreds of lines of code in the jQuery files, there's a definition that says whenever you use data icon, and it's an attribute of an A tag, and you have arrow U, draw an arrow up. The CSS and the JavaScript and all of that is working together to do this. I don't need to know exactly the line of code. I don't need to know exactly, exactly how it works. I just need to know when I want an arrow, I add data icon dash arrow D for down, and I get an arrow. So we did it for project two the hard way. We wrote all of the CSS ourselves. Here we have the shortcuts because of jQuery mobile. Yes. Who would you put if you wanted to put to the sides? Like R and L? Well, if you want to do like arrow L, yeah. L for left and right. I think you can even do diagonally. Uh, I don't remember that one. I don't, I don't think it's like UL up left. When there's one that it doesn't make sense, it'll just ignore it. But we can look them all up on the website. So knowing the right attributes pretty much it's often going to be attributes some sort of attribute often starting with data data dash something that gets translated by jQuery mobile to do something we can get very complex but not as complex as if we were writing it manually for example this is our first screen it looks all right we have a way to quickly create a header area, a footer area, a main content area. So inside of section, 
let's say before h1 header tag header on its own is a plain old HTML5 tag that has no built-in meaning we would use CSS plus classes and IDs to style that we did that for the Marvel blog well guess what there's a bunch of built-in jQuery mobile code that will quickly create a nicer looking header than I could possibly do possibly um, data role header actually I want that heading one inside of the header save it and run it and I'm creating a header area but then I'm styling it or affecting it with a data role of header put something inside of it run that jQuery Mobile divides the header from the rest of the content, makes the line, changes the color, centers your, your H1. With a little bit more effort, we can style it some more. But the, just the basic quick thing that happened is it created a top header area. Think about like you know the Instagram app or many other apps that you use. There's a header area at the top, the logos at the top, and all of that centered we will be able to change the colors and do much more styling but very quickly with header and the data roll of header look what we have guess what we've also got a footer we've got a way to divide up the, the screen so that now at the bottom you'll have a footer area when we created footer with our own manual CSS, we have to write a lot of CSS to make it look how we wanted. Here, with a data role, it's done so quickly. Let's say after your button, footer, which has no inherent styling until we add data role, footer. Commonly, when I teach this, I often recommend to use an H4 here. Let me just say something like footer. We've got a footer area, data roll footer so that it behaves like a footer, some form of content we get a footer. Now, I don't know about you, but usually when I think about footer, I usually think it's at the foot of the document, right? We need one more attribute. Data position. Fixed. So by default, data roll footer will separate that content from other content and center the stuff inside of it but by default it will not actually put it at the very bottom of your screen it'll just put it at the end of your content the end of my content was just one button if I had ten more things here it would push footer down instead of waiting for that we can do data position fix and it should fix it you should stick it to the foot, no matter the size of your screen. So if you haven't been kind of rearranging the size of your screen, you should give it a shot. You know, if I'm wide like this, like a tablet, it looks a certain way. If I'm tall and skinny, another way. Mobile friendly. jQuery Mobile is kicking in to change the size of my screen. I'm not sure if I said the keywords last time. Responsive web design. Responsive web design our website responds to the size of the screen. It changes to the size of the screen. jQuery Mobile has that built in. We didn't have to write any CSS. We're just actually writing HTML. 
all of these data roles are just HTML, but jQuery model behind the scenes um, does its thing. If we have a header and we have a footer, we should have a main content area. This button, this hyper, this hyperlink, will be inside of my main area in between. So header at the top, footer at the bottom, some sort of main area in between. This is one of the ones that you just have to kind of memorize because a header has a data role of header, which makes sense. And footer has a data role of footer, makes sense. Section has a data role of page, not section. But we saw that one first, so it should make sense. But this one in the middle is the one that makes the least sense article. Article is the tag. And the data role, well, actually, it's not data role, it's role main and then class y dash content this is the one that's just annoying to remember there used to be a data role of content but they took it out now they want us to do it this way role main class ui dash content so the old way don't even don't even learn it because it's it's removed. Right now we're on jQuery 1.4.5. I've been using it since like 1.2. I've seen the evolution of this. They've been making it better and better. But between versions 1.3 and 1.4, they said now there's no more data role content. There's role main and class UI content. Maybe then when there's version 1.5, they'll change it again or something. But that's what we need for the main content. Very specific spelling. It's two attributes, role of main, class of one dash content. The purpose of that, it's a little subtle, but the purpose of that, before that, your content is bumping up right to the edge. After that attribute, now there's a little breathing room. So then it's obvious at the top there's a header area, and then at the bottom a footer area. Everything that we've done so far has only been applying to uh, page one. Once you go to page two, it looks really plain again, really boring again. That's because we never added any headers and footers and data roles. We're not going to at the moment. You, you can if you want to. I'm going to end the lecture in just a bit. Um, but this is what we've got so far using jQuery and jQuery mobile and using the right attributes 
we're creating a whole new screen, a whole new interface for uh, a mobile project. The catch is that we have to add these data roles and such everywhere that we need it. Right? I need it on page two, but I, I don't have sec I, I don't have header, I don't have footer, all of that stuff. The other catch is that you need the connection to the files. If you don't have internet connection, this will not work. If you misspelled any of this code, it will not work. So you got one misspelled letter broke the whole thing. JSS. Whoops, I meant JS. That broke the whole thing. So there are downsides. It needs an internet connection, it needs to be spelled properly, you need to add these attributes on everywhere that you need them. But that's still a lot faster than writing all of that custom code that we did last time. And of course, on these different days, we've done it all the manual way. You know, with our own two hands, we wrote a lot of code. Uh, but this is another way to do it, and this is a legitimate way, using frameworks, starting points, sort of templates. Uh, we'll end the lecture at this point, and when we come back next time, we'll continue this project next time to introduce even more things, such as pop-up boxes, uh, cool nav bars with multiple buttons, uh, changing the design of colors, adding images, and all that great stuff. So uh, we'll do some lab time for a little bit in case you need a little bit more time for that project that's due today and when we come back tomorrow we'll continue and if this didn't quite work I'm gonna put my copy in the network folder and you can check it or you can call me for some help